Welcome to the Student Performance Assessment Tutorial. In front of you, you should have a paper that says, Pre-Reading Student Performance Assessment. These assessments have been designed to prepare you for your end-of-level tests. They are also designed to evaluate your reading comprehension and your writing skills. During the school year, you will complete eight assessments. Three in quarter one, two in quarters two and three, and one in quarter four. To complete these assessments, you will need the assessment paper and two to three pieces of lined paper. Each assessment will have two to three different tasks. Each task will have at least three steps to complete. Read the instructions carefully. If it says to identify and label information, you will complete this step directly on your student assessment. When it asks you to complete one or more paragraphs, you will complete this step on your lined paper. Now I will model and demonstrate how to com correctly complete this type of test. Task 1. Read the poem, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark, by Emily Dickinson. Once you have read the poem, question 1 asks you to identify the theme. Write your theme, or the theme you identified, directly on the test and on your lined paper. Here is an example of a theme. Overcoming life's trials is an example of theme. Notice it is not a line or passage from the poem. It is completely separate. Now that you have identified the theme, you need to identify and label three pieces of contextual evidence to prove the theme you have chosen. This is called proof. Here are some, several examples of the theme. First, circle the contextual evidence. As indicated, this is an example of theme. This is an example because this passage means that we all have trials and we all have people to help us overcome them. Here are some additional examples of theme. Question 2, or Step 2, asks you to identify and label three examples of imagery. In the poem, you need to circle the evidence. Then, you need to label the correct imagery. Finally, you need to explain what the imagery represents. Here are several examples. I have circled the element from the poem. This is an example of personification. In the poem, dark represents life's trials or life's struggles. Here are some other examples.
question three would like you to write a paragraph using contextual evidence and evidence from your personal life to explain how you have overcome the trials in your life. Before you begin writing, choose a trial you have faced or are currently facing. Refer to the list of examples for ideas. Now, let's review the paragraph format required for this assessment. First, you need to have an introductory sentence. Then, you need to provide proof. This proof equals three pieces of contextual evidence with three appropriate explanations of how the proof supports the topic. Finally, you need a concluding sentence. When you are done with your paragraph, you should have 8 to 10 sentences minimum. Here is a sentence starter for the introduction. One of the hardest trials I had to overcome was... You need to complete the sentence using the trial or struggle that you chose. Now you need to start adding your proof. Here is an example of how you can do this. In the poem, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark, Emily Dickinson says, You need to finish the sentence with a quote or a paraphrase from the poem. This is your contextual evidence. Next, you need to explain how the evidence supports your introduction sentence and the prompt. Here is an example of a sentence starter. This part of the poem is similar to my trials because... You need to finish that statement. Then you need to continue writing your paragraph. You need to find two more pieces of contextual evidence and provide an explanation for those pieces of evidence. At the end of your paragraph, you should also include a concluding sentence. Once again, you should have 8 to 10 sentences when you are completed with question 3. Task 2. Read the quote by President Snow from The Hunger Games. Question 1. Choose a character from the book. A few examples of characters are provided for you on the assessment sheet. Once you have chosen a character, write the character's name down on your assessment and on your lined paper. For this demonstration, I chose Katniss Everdeen. Question 2 asks you to pretend that you are the character you selected. This means you are the character and you will be writing in first person using the character's point of view. Write a paragraph explaining how the quote makes you the character feel. Be sure to use contextual evidence in your paragraph. Here is what this paragraph might look like at the beginning. If I were Katniss Everdeen, this statement by President Snow would make me feel very angry. It makes me angry when he describes a fight to the death in a pageant of honor. There is no honor in this type of death. It is unnecessary. Secondly, it makes me angry because President Snow describes a new era, but the new era has more death. 
Now you need to finish writing your paragraph or finish writing the paragraph I have started. Remember, it should be 8 to 10 sentence and include contextual evidence with appropriate explanations. Question 3 wants you to pretend that you live in Pan Am. You now need to write a paragraph explaining how the quote makes you feel personally as a citizen of Pan Am. You may choose to live in any district or the capital. Here is an example of the first part of this paragraph from the point of view of someone from District 12. If I lived in Pan Am, the quote by President Snow would make me angry, just like Katniss. It makes me angry because President Snow doesn't value life. He says to pay for the lives lost during the war, each district must sacrifice two kids each year. It also makes me angry that he refers to the Hunger Games as a pageant of honor. Please finish writing your paragraph or finish writing the paragraph that I started as the example. Remember, this paragraph is about how you would feel if you lived in Pan Am, and it must have 8 to 10 sentences with contextual evidence and appropriate explanations. Task 3. On your lined paper, write the headers, similarities, and differences. Under each heading, you are going to identify three similarities with evidence from both the poem and the quote. You are also going to identify three differences with evidence from the poem and from the quote by President Snow. Here are some examples. Notice that in these examples, I am not giving you the contextual evidence. You must find the contextual evidence on your own. The pieces of evidence that you choose will vary between you and your classmates. They are not going to be identical. Also notice, I did not give you number three for both similarities and differences. You must read the passage and choose for yourself what you think they have in common and what they have that is different. Once you have your list, this will answer questions two and three. Question four wants you to write two paragraphs answering the question of what these have in common and how these are examples of dystopian societies and how you might change this. Let's focus paragraph one on the similarities and differences. Here is what this paragraph might look like in the beginning to show the similarities and differences. The poem, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark, and the statement by President Snow are similar in many ways based on the ideas of dystopian societies. The first thing they have in common are the references to trials. The poem talks about trials as a darkness that needs to be overcome so you can see the future. The quote by President Snow refers to the trials associated with the war, terrible war. While these trials are different, they both refer to a dark time that needs to be overcome. However, despite similarities, they are both very different. The poem offers hope. And the quote is meant to offer hope, but it instills fear. Paragraph 2. You should be focusing on the examples of dystopian societies and how you might fix the problems in those societies. Here are some possible sentence starters. These are not complete sentences. 
only the beginnings of sentences that you could use in paragraph two. The poem and the quote are examples of dystopian societies. This is evidence in the poem when. It is also evident in the quote when. These dystopian societies could be fixed if. You are now responsible for finishing paragraph one, talking about the similarities and differences between the poem and the quote. You also need to finish writing paragraph two, which focuses on both of these as examples of dystopian societies and how you may fix it. Remember, each paragraph should have eight to 10 sentences minimum. To complete both paragraphs, you should have 16 to 20 sentences total. Please finish writing your paragraphs. Now that you have completed this trial or demonstration of the student performance assessment, you need to staple the assessment paper to the top of all of your pieces of lined paper. Be sure to put your name on the paper and turn it in.